Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Battery production is constraining manufacturing, but we're led to believe this is partly due to the metals required for production. On battery day, we were told that there was actually plenty of lithium, despite what most people were assuming previously. In fact, enough lithium just in Nevada to supply the entire US auto fleet. And that's just the lithium they know about without trying. As a relief as this was, it turned out that nickel is actually what's in shortage. So we are now led to believe that the supply of nickel is what is holding back the production of batteries, aside from there simply not being enough battery factories. It was inferred by most, including myself, that nickel is important for the progress of battery production, and Tesla can't fulfill their objectives until that is sorted, i.e. selling 20 million cars a year and creating enough energy storage. You see, Tesla have designed this amazing new tabless battery, the 4680, that is more energy dense, lower cost, and has a high cycle life with an assumed 1 million mile distance until degradation, while still having the ability to charge at a reasonable rate, have a lower cost per kilowatt hour, and a higher kilowatt hour per kg, the miracle battery. Well, the part of the battery that uses the nickel is the cathode. And on battery day, we actually saw Tesla mention three different types of cathode, as in there'll be three different versions of the 4680 batteries. And the first one is actually iron, which requires no expensive, scarce nickel. But this wasn't really made out to be a big deal. The most energy dense cathode was the nickel cathode, which will be used for the likes of the semi-truck, roadster, cybertruck, and likely the Model S Plaid Plus. And there's also a nickel and manganese cathode, which is two thirds nickel and one third manganese, allowing the nickel supply to reach 50% more production with cost savings and not very much difference in power density. Due to Tesla's efficient drivetrain, for the Made in China Model 3, Tesla have actually been using CATL's lithium ion phosphate batteries, or LFP, which stands for L-I-F-E-P-O. In other words, the iron is F because of the chemical symbol for iron is F-E. The batteries are already using an iron cathode, and they have significantly reduced the cost of the car, as the LFP batteries cost about half as much as the 2170 batteries. Recently, Tesla have also started using the LFP batteries in their standard range Model 3 in Fremont now too. Again, this will significantly increase their profit margins and reduce the cost of batteries. Apparently, one issue of LFP is the range drops significantly in colder weather, but it would appear the solution to this has been to heat the batteries to 60 degrees Celsius. Not only is iron a very abundant cheap resource, in addition to that, the iron cathodes have a very high life cycle. In other words, they can be charged a lot of times before it starts to hit battery degradation but at the cell level, it only gets half as many kilowatt hours per kg compared to a nickel cathode. However, when you take it to the pack level, nickel only becomes about 50% more powerful than iron, which makes it good for stationary storage and medium range applications, where energy density is not paramount. Tesla are building battery factories in Berlin and Texas currently. These factories are obviously going to be for the 4680 battery cells. I mean, why would they build them for the 2170s and then swap over the production line later? They are also going to be built in unison with the car factories, implying the batteries will be used in the new car production lines in Berlin and Texas. I would say from the start, as it would create too many inefficiencies to change over later. It is also announced they'll be using cell to vehicle integration too, or structural battery pack if you will. It sounded like on the earnings call, Tesla had worked out their battery kinks they had mentioned on battery day and are now ready to scale up. They just needed to achieve this before these new battery factories were built. This is further evident by Panasonic announcing they're rebuilding 4680 batteries in Giga Nevada. As Tesla want as many of these batteries as possible, it sounds like they are also helping LG and CATL produce them too, as these companies are also extremely competent in making batteries, and Tesla wants as many batteries as they can get. So in these factories, they could likely be building all three types of batteries, most likely on different lines, i.e. a line for iron cathodes, a line for nickel cathodes, and another line for nickel and manganese. So although we are hearing about delays for the Cybertruck, Semi-Truck and Roadster, this may very well be due to the lack of nickel and not delays of the 4680 batteries. But it's the LFP batteries that could really make a difference. So if Tesla are currently able to achieve enough range with CATL's version of LFP batteries for their standard range Model 3, then maybe Tesla can get enough range for the long range Model 3 and Model Y with their iron cathode 4680 batteries given all the other cost and weight savings they're able to achieve 
with things like cell to vehicle integration, diecast manufacturing, and tabless battery cells. So perhaps the Berlin factory will only require nickel and manganese for the performance based Model Y in their factory. And the long range Model Y could actually use Tesla's LFP batteries. This would be a huge cost saving. It may cost something like three or $4,000 for the battery sales for each car. The Texas factory may be the only one with pure nickel and Tesla sound like they have already sourced enough nickel locally in the US eventually. They would also be making the LFP batteries there too for the Model Y and Model 3 factory. So I believe that the iron cathode 4680 LFP batteries are highly underrated. The cost saving could be insane. And the fact there is no problem getting iron is a really big deal compared to nickel. Of course, the Model 2 will be using these LFP batteries too. They're ideal. It would seem that the Made in China Model 3 is using a 54 kilowatt hour battery, getting around a 260 mile range. This is with CATL's LFP batteries. So imagine again how much Tesla's 4680 batteries could achieve, given how much lighter they are. But it's a virtuous circle. As the lighter the batteries get, then the less energy is required to move a lighter car. In addition to that, given that the Model 2 will be smaller and lighter anyway, with vehicle to cell integration and diecast manufacturing, then maybe Tesla only need a 40 kilowatt hour battery to get a range of about 220 miles for the Model 2, which might be how they're capable of producing a $25,000 Tesla. And as for Giga Nevada, this was said about Panasonic. The Japanese electronics conglomerate is also planning to add a new production line at the Nevada facility it owns with Tesla, and is looking at building a lithium ion battery business in Norway in a bid to tap the European car makers. Panasonic plans to start test production for the new line for Tesla's 4680 battery in the financial year beginning April the 1st. So Panasonic are starting 4680 production as early as April, and it will be a new production line. According to Elon's tweet, Fremont and Shanghai will not transition over to 4680s for another two years or so, implying that these 4680 batteries are not earmarked for any car, assuming that Texas Battery Factory makes enough batteries in-house for the cars manufactured on site. Assuming that Tesla's 4680 pilot plant at Cato Road in Fremont make enough batteries for Model S Plaid Plus, which is more than likely, the rest of the S and X models appear to still be using the old 18650 batteries. Therefore, these Panasonic batteries will likely be the iron cathode based 4680s and quite possibly be used for energy storage. LG and CATL sound like they are likely to start producing 4680s too. Tesla is their biggest customer, so it makes sense to deliver them a more profitable product. And when Fremont is able to transition to 4680 batteries, then there's enough space in the Nevada Gigafactory to make far more batteries than their car consumption can utilize, as the 4680 batteries take one eighth the same area to manufacture, which might finally mean that Tesla get the energy business off the ground. They can produce enormous amount of these 4680 LFP batteries that can then be deployed for battery storage. Even their battery storage in South Australia was massively profitable. It would be an even bigger money maker of the 4680s. However, they also have LG and CATL, which might make enough batteries to further supplement their energy business again. So I expect this side of the business to really start taking off, perhaps towards the end of the year. The power wall would have to use manganese with nickel cathodes, as they already weigh about 100 kilograms. If it went to iron, then it would be almost twice the weight, which is going to be too heavy for residential applications. They also have a higher margin on power walls, and it's a much smaller market than commercial use so Tesla can justify using nickel in the power walls. It sounds like Tesla have secured their own nickel supply now though, from New Caledonia. They were in talks of Indonesia, but Indonesia weren't interested in simply supplying nickel. They wanted battery manufacturing there too, which may not work so well with Tesla's supply chain process. Tesla really just want to start with the raw materials and create everything from there. New Caledonia has 10% of the world's nickel supply, which sounds like it should be enough to keep Tesla going for now. So perhaps this is partly responsible for the delays in Texas, although on battery day, Elon did say he'd spoken to all the biggest nickel mining CEOs and they had agreed to mine more nickel for him too. Elon said they planned on making 100 gigawatt hours of batteries just themselves next year. Just some quick math, at an average of 65 kilowatt hour each, that equates to about one and a half million cars. This is obviously extra to everything they already have. If they do one million cars this year, then that means they would have enough batteries for two and a half million cars next year. Of course, as I keep saying, they have Panasonic, LG and CATL increasing their supply too. So I don't think Tesla will be battery constrained next year. 
My estimate was that Tesla would be on a run rate of 5 million cars by the end of 2023, which could loosely be interpreted as Q4 deliveries for 2023 would be about 1.25 million alone. So why aren't we hearing much about this LFP battery? Well, aside from pumping up the stock price, what would be the point? It could create an Osborne effect, meaning customers might wait for these new versions and not buy the existing cars. It could attract more attention from the competition or even the oil industry. But if I'm right about this, it will be huge. And we should find out soon when Berlin opens. It could be a very good second half of the year for Tesla shareholders. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.